Hey, how you doing? Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about miking up an acoustic guitar. And I don't mean plugging a cable into an acoustic electric guitar. No, I mean the analog world. Using microphones to capture real sound coming out into the world and into these microphones and then back into whatever that machine is behind me. There are a lot of different ways to record acoustic guitar and what I'm about to present is not necessarily the only way. However, I believe that the absolute best way to mic an acoustic guitar is actually to do it in stereo, which means using two microphones at once. There are many things to consider when you're recording acoustic guitar and those are such things as the room size, the type of room that you're in, whether it's a treated room or otherwise, what type of microphones you're using, what type of guitar body shape you have, what kind of skill level the guitar player is, what type of guitar they're playing, finger style, strumming, it all affects the tone. So with all those different parameters and elements to consider, I think that stereo miking in the way that I'm gonna show you how is the kind of fail safe. More time being creative, less time being whatever the opposite of that is. So as I mentioned, this is not the only way to record acoustic guitar. This is just the way that I like to do it. And if you are interested in trying this out, I think it is a very simple option for you. I'm also going to assume that if you own two microphones, you probably know how to set appropriate levels, which of course means that you're not clipping, but you're also not hardly audible. You're right in that sweet, juicy, minus six decibel range. So as long as you're equipped with that knowledge, I'm going to get into the microphone placement as well as the type of microphones you should be using. And I'm going to go through a few different styles of acoustic guitar playing, finger style, strumming, etc., to show you how this combination of miking up an acoustic guitar is very versatile and very transparent, very clear. So right now let's get down to what kind of mics I'm using and what types of mics work best for recording acoustic guitar. All right, so here is my preferred setup for stereo miking. We have right here a 57. You want some sort of small condenser, small diaphragm condenser mic at the fretboard. And I'll tell you why that's important in a sec. And over here, I have a Rode NT1 which is a larger diaphragm condenser mic. And this is good for picking up the lower end of the acoustic guitar, the kind of bassier, heavier side. So with these two, you capture the high frequencies and the low frequencies. I find that this microphone combination is ideal for recording acoustic guitar. Now, let's talk about the distance because this is where it's important to have somewhat precise accurate measurements. This is something that I think engineers have probably struggled with in their lives. I'm no engineer, but I can imagine if somebody's always moving around, you know, the performer is moving around and things like that, it can be difficult to capture a consistent recording sound. So I think it's important for you to kind of abide by these guidelines and of course, adjust them to your tastes. But Here's a general rule of thumb. So what I'm gonna do is measure the distance from the fretboard to the first microphone, the 57 here, and I can see it is about six inches or so. This is called the rule of three or whatever you wanna call this. The concept is that your microphones should be spaced apart at least three times the length of this distance here that we just measured. So. That would be six times three is 18. I am a math wizard. As you can see, this is clearly too close. So what we wanna do here is actually move this microphone to about 18 inches away from this microphone. And perfect. So they're perfectly in line, of course, but the distance here, 18 inches, six inches, six inches. So this will eliminate any sort of phase issues, which is the one drawback to sometimes using two microphones is you can 
basically have a worthless microphone if it's phasing and only end up with a mono take that is not properly mic'd in the area that you would want a mono microphone to be. So, with all that said, let's put that away. Let's hear what this sounds like. So it also obviously helps if you have an awesome guitar to mic up. And just so you can, you know, hear what it would be like if, say, the microphones were phasing, perhaps. Let's move this one a little bit closer. So this would not be following that rule that I outlined before. Let's hear what that would do. So assuming you're listening with some headphones on, that probably was a bit more phasey than our initial ratio of distance. So now with our mics back to normal, I can show you a little way you can kind of tinker with this. And that would be adjusting where this microphone, the smaller diaphragm condenser is regarding the fretboard. So before it was kind of on the left side, if you're looking down at your guitar neck, it was on the left side of the fretboard of the 12th fret. So that was capturing a little bit more of the lower frequency range on these strings. And I want to make sure to abide by our rule and make room for that adjustment there. And now this is going to pick up even more low end, almost off the entire guitar, but this is going to pick up the higher frequencies from these strings. And we'll see what that difference yields. So, three variations, two of them, I would say, usable, one of them, maybe not. Depends on what you're going for, of course. Now I'm gonna move back to our original recommended positioning, and let's just double check and make sure. Remember the rule of three, we've got six inches, and we've got 18 inches. So we are right on schedule. I'm gonna play with a pick now and let you hear what that sounds like.
Well, there you have it, my friends. Stereo miking, the only way to mic an acoustic guitar. I'm just kidding. But it's the way I like to do it, and it always gives me solid results, and it gives me a lot of flexibility, like I mentioned. That's what I value the most when it comes to home recording in general, is being able to do one thing one way all the time and not have to think about, oh man, did I get that? Did I do that right? Do I have to go back and do it? That's really taxing. Uh, I'm sure we've all been there, but if you can figure out a way to do something well that works for you, then you should try to stick to that. So that's what I found with this type of miking up acoustic guitars. So hopefully uh, it helps you find your happy place when it comes to miking acoustics. Let me know in the comments how you prefer to mic your acoustic guitars. I'd love to learn from you guys too. There is an XY axis that you can put like two small diaphragm condenser mics at, you know, like seven or eight inches off the 12th fret, kind of in an X shape. That's also a very common way to do it. But I like having the flexibility of multiple different diaphragm sizes in my mics. I just find it gives me, again, more options in the tonal environment. So I hope this was a helpful lesson for you guys. I'm going to be doing a lot more home recording studio tips for guitar players coming up. So make sure you stay tuned to my channel and explore other videos I've made. And until next time, keep shredding.